In this series of videos, we're building a beginner's model railroad on IKEA tables using pre-cut plywood and pillars available as a kit. Track system of your choice. The result is a model railroad with two stations, a harbor with connection to a ferry boat. This switching yard handles the freight cars coming from the two industries on the layout. Hello and welcome to the fourth episode in this series where we're building a kind of beginner's layout from ground up. And I'm going to start this uh, fourth session by a short Q&A uh, uh, session here uh, based on the comments and uh, feedback I've gotten from the first three episodes. Uh, <laughs> one of the more frequently asked questions is, you know, you, you painted the weather the tracks with the brown paint. Uh, but you didn't clean the tracks. Yeah, of course, uh, the tracks needs to be cleaned, uh, of course, after weathering and also as a regular part of the maintenance of a, of a layout uh, model railroad like this. And for this, I'm using a, just a wooden block. It's uh, just cut square. It's uh, 40 by 40 millimeters. Uh, and I just slide it along the tracks. And that efficiently wipes away all uh, dirt spots uh, on the tracks, really. And for this initial uh, uh, clean of the tracks, uh, where I'm actually removing paint on the top of the, the rails, then I, I wrap a piece of jeans cloth around and I secure the jeans cloth to the cloth uh, to the to the block with a piece of uh, this is a electrician tape, black masking tape. So two turns around and then uh, if you like uh, you can also pour some isopropanol onto that cloth and it's just to wipe that paint off. Once you completed a section try with an engine or a locomotive that you have successfully cleaned the tracks properly. What else? Well I had also feedback, uh, people who actually got started on building, uh, they cut all the pieces themselves, but uh, they have uh, otherwise uh, followed the, the, the track map and everything I provided for the Martinstown. Um, uh, and one, some of them uh, come back and say that uh, there is a poor adhesive strength for PVA glue to the IKEA tables. Uh, and that is correct. <laughs> what you probably need to do if you encounter this problem, or first of all, you need to try it. Glue something to the table, a piece of, of a paper or something, to make sure that uh, your, the glue you're using is, uh, has a sufficient bond strength to that type of surface. What you can do is to, to, to sand the surface a bit. Uh, what you also can do is to choose another glue. In your DIY shop, there are plenty of glue which has awesome uh, bonding strengths you can bond you know heavy objects to walls and it has uh, almost an instant uh, um, cure there so there are uh, a range of different glues to choose from choose one which actually works uh, then at this point in the construction we have uh, completed first was an introductional video but then we have made uh, the the sub road bed and now we have the tracks uh, out i would propose to you to um, buy a second mobile station. The mobile station is this control handle you use to control the trains. Uh, so, you know, if you're a family or if you have some friends, you definitely want another control handle. So, you know, because operating uh, this type of layout with uh, being two, is, it's more than twice as fun. So that's something I really recommend. And even if you're just doing this alone it's a big advantage to have the second mobile station for you know changing uh, turnouts positions and uh, also driving two trains uh, simultaneously so that's something i recommend another thing which is very good at this point is to buy a switcher switcher is a short style locomotive uh, which uh, uh, can uh, handle the freight cars, uh, do the switching work in the yards and uh, also pull the freight trains along the lines. So uh, that's definitely something you should be considering uh, at this point in the construction. Uh, then uh, <laughs> 
I had a question on why not building um, the, you know, I'm, I have this sub road built, this plywood is everywhere. I don't build anything on the tabletop really here. Uh, and the th question was that, wh why is that? Uh, you know, why waste uh, plywood and do all that work? Uh, but the reason is that if you lay tracks directly onto a, a big plate like this, the tabletop will amplify the noise coming from the tracks uh, when, the, when the train runs across the, the, the tracks, uh, along the tracks. So um, it will be very noisy. What happens with this, uh, these uh, plywood pieces is that they're, they're kind of small and they're sectioned. So every piece is joined together with this uh, latex rubber compound. Uh, and the, also the pillars are with latex isolation as well. So you get a, a good uh, noise reduction by doing this. Another good uh, reason for not laying the lowest level of, of tracks on, directly on the table is that you limit yourself in creation of the model landscape. Such layouts has a tendency to look flat when when um, uh, when they're completed because there's no way to go lower than the lowest track so that that is the the two main drivers for for doing it like that uh, all right so then <laughs> we're gonna move ahead and uh, get started on the actual terrain structure so let's go we're starting off by making the flat ground surfaces. Over the years, I've been using a range of different materials uh, for this uh, purpose. We're gonna have a look at what's available. Uh, maybe most common is uh, thin plywood. This is a four millimeter thick uh, spruce plywood. The plywood is uh, good, but it's uh, hard to cut. You need to saw it and it creates sawdust. We're going to use uh, cardboard in this uh, tutorial here, since it's uh, super easy to cut with scissors or a uh, hobby knife and it doesn't create any dust or anything uh, negative at all. A somewhat more premium solution is uh, these uh, laminated um, boards, which has uh, styrofoam-ish material in the middle and uh, two sheets of paper on each side. These are commonly used uh, to laminate uh, photos or posters. So you'll find these in the artist area or in shops where they are specialized in frames and things for that. Another option is uh, thin sheets of styrofoam, but I wouldn't recommend that uh, as uh, a surface because it's a bit too soft and not uh, stable enough. And anyway, you need uh, tooling or machines to cut the styrofoam thin like this. So back here we are with the cardboard piece. It's uh, really easy. You just uh, take your hobby knife. I don't actually even paint at this or, or draw marks I just put it in place where I want it hold it in towards the edges and cut along the edge using a, a hobby knife put it back in place and then trim any pieces that weren't perfect to start with and your ground pieces there glue pillars in place or supports for this uh, ground surface Glue the edges of the cardboard and slide it in between the plywood sheets like this. All right, so now the ground is in place for the distillery or one of the industries on, on my Martinstown layout. Let's get started on the station, the main station area up here. So I do the same process. I cut a square piece of cardboard I cut out the pillars, the support structure, glue them in place using a good type of glue. And then I temporarily keep them in place using masking tape or carpenter's tape like this to get a bit of stretch towards the glued area. And here comes the area where I will have my logistic sander. Uh, just slide it into place and it needed a few extra supports and here comes the piece which fills out the 
was missing part in the plywood. Here's the harbor piece, uh, which I'm also gluing in place with supports underneath. And to simplify the gluing process of the stone wall, I'm gluing a cardboard piece all the way here. With uh, all the cardboard pieces in place, it's time to paint. For this, I'm using Liquitex Brown. It's a burnt umber brown uh, acrylic paint. And be sure to paint quickly and don't thin the paint with a lot of water because that will ruin the cardboard. So a quick layer and then we're ready to place portals and inner tunnels. For this I'm using inner tunnels uh, from Nach. Uh, you can also build these if you like, but it requires uh, toolings and materials. These are ready-made in uh, hard foam. I'm using a tunnel portal 58248, which is for two tracks. Now, what's really important, especially when placing tunnel portals in curves like this, is to make sure that your trains with the longest coaches can pass through the portal. Otherwise, you'll end up in uh, troubles later on when you want to run your trains and they hit the portal edge. And I can say that uh, this uh, portal was, uh, well, for uh, shorter trains and shorter coaches, it was uh, perfect. But for the longest coaches, I needed to carve a bit in the edges. I think that uh, the tunnel portals, uh, to a great extent, uh, really tells the viewer on what area you're modeling. So in most cases, I think it's necessary to make the tunnel portals on your own. I have a tutorial on how to make uh, tunnel portals. So I'm putting up a link to that. Uh, thereby you can also adapt the size, the width to whatever you like. But for uh, this uh, Swiss Alp uh, style layout, the Noch portal is perfect. Now, in order to decide for the exact location or the best location for the tunnel portals, I decided I wanted to uh, set up some uh, ground structure. And to do that, I'm using a set from Noch, which is called Terraform. And it contains all of the parts you need to make hollow uh, large mounting construction. Here are the plastic holders for the support pins. These will be screwed into uh, the tabletop and uh, into those we're uh, feeding the support pins. The support pillars are then cut to length. It's uh, better to keep them a bit too long because this can be adjusted afterwards. Once you feel happy slide on the top joining part. With the joiners in place, you can add cross bars over to the other support pillars. There are also flexible cross bars if you like some variation and not just straight sections. You can now also slide the joiners up and down until you have found the ideal shape and height of your landscape. Once you've found the preferred location for your tunnel portals, just glue the inner tunnel in place and then simply just glue the tunnel portal to the outside of that inner tunnel. Before the glue uh, cures, run a few trains again. Take your longest coaches and try it out so you make sure that the coaches do not hit the inner walls. Now at this point I also wanted to check what type of environments I want on the layout. I started out with some small houses and a, a kind of countryside uh, station but it didn't look all that good and especially not to that background. So instead I tried a city environment with some uh, houses I had lying around and yeah, this uh, looks pretty cool, but maybe not what I had in mind anyway. So then I decided to change the backdrop. 
So instead of that uh, rather flat, I'm going for a Alp style layout. And this uh, looks much better. Of course, these houses, it was also something I just had lying around. I will uh, replace them with uh, better houses later. But this also gave me a good feeling for how tall I want my mountains to be. And thereby I can adjust that. Now we're going to cover the mountains. And for that, I'm using landscapes foil. Uh, previously, I've been using a combination of mesh and uh, toilet paper, but uh, the mesh has been increasingly difficult to find. So this uh, foil, which uh, actually has the same price as the mesh had, uh, does a much better work at a shorter time. So what all you need to do is to wrinkle this uh, foil and stretch it out again and you have uh, some kind of basic structure for your landscape surface. Once I've gotten the foil in position, I glue it to the cardboard using PVA glue and I fix it uh, temporarily with pins uh, until the glue has cured. Then way, same way I continue all around this uh, tall mountain area and fix with pins like this. The edges will be plastered later so it doesn't have to be all that perfect. Joints between uh, different uh, parts of the landscape fold is uh, glued and uh, covered with carpenter's tape like this. I will uh, transport my layout uh, between different sites, so a uh, backing is uh, necessary as well as a side plate. I make mine from plywood, but you can definitely make your uh, back plate from cardboard boxes as well. Um, make sure to cut hole into it so you can access the tracks from the side and the back in case of derailments and other things. So this is what it all looked like when I have assembled the sides and the back to, to my layout. So you see that you have pretty good access uh, into the tracks for maintenance and cleaning if you like. All right, so now our model railroad has got its uh, landscape curvature and surface. In the next episode, we will work on that a bit uh, by adding uh, a gypsum layer and uh, make uh, rock castings and uh, make it a, a bit more pretty than just that white uh, surface. So that's happening in the next episode. Did you know that this channel is totally dependent on on uh, supporters like you. So if you want to be one of the good guys and support the channel, uh, please get over to Patreon. Set up a support account there from like, you know, $1 per month or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And don't forget to subscribe and enable little bell and you will get the notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya.